John Hall uh, is going to introduce the project. Um, it's called Outsider Music, Outsider Sound and Spirit, enabling those left behind by normal services to develop creativity and self-awareness towards a music-based performance. Okay, thanks very much for inviting us here to the event. Yeah, my name is John Hall. I'm a music producer, music therapist, and founder of Outsider Music Community Interest Company. And we have Elaine and Martin. Would you like to say hi, Elaine? Hi, hi, Elaine Collins. I'm a yoga therapist and psychotherapist um, and work in the mind, body uh, and mindfulness space. And uh, that was a part that I contributed to the, the project. And we've lost Martin. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm sure he'll join. Who was, um, had, has a long background in the National Health Service in as a commissioner for mental health services and has been a huge supporter, particularly of John's work, but also in the bringing together of this because in a way he saw the missing link in provision and um, was passionate in from behind pushing us to create something a bit different here and has been um, yeah incredibly supported throughout. Yeah, so uh, our project's called Outside of Music, Sound and Spirit, and it uses music and mind, body and spirit activities, as Elaine just said, to work alongside people struggling with mental health difficulties. Through song, music and the creation of a finished product, it helps people to build self-confidence, motivation, agency, and gives people something they can be proud of. It cultivates resilience and through peer support, recognition and appreciation, people find themselves. I've done a lot of projects in hospitals and in the community, and I think with just music therapy, it can do great things. But what we wanted to do is extend the support for people through this project by integrating Elaine's mind, body and spirit work. And we were delighted to get the grant from the Emergence Foundation to, to run the project, and it's been great. And here's a short five minute video um, which shows some of the highlights of the work from the project. circles and the same vicious cycles of repetitive habits that are making my own habitats. I keep repeating myself. I'm fat and I see it. If you're really can I be fit? Fix me and clear up the item. Right I delusion found out. It helps me really, really, really very much. My whole life has changed through this project as I was wow. working with John. I mean, I, I had such, such little confidence at the beginning of the project. And, and yeah, yeah. I had so much more confidence. And I realize now that when I was 
feeling very guilty about things that happened to me in my past that were quite bad and now I have confidence to face those demons now. You've got to be there, you've got to attend, you've got to push through feeling alone and working alone in a room or wherever, and you've got to make it happen, even though you're not surrounded by people. So it's not, you know, it's, it's some level of resilience and discipline that you're, we'll be, I'm building at least through this. And I reckon that when we do meet again, I, I'm going to be for one a little bit stronger for it. Because, because when, we was, when I'm with you, when we're at the studio, I rely a lot more on you just to make something sound great. Whereas when we do this, it's a lot more homework for me just to, to make it happen. And then you, you can make it sound great as well on top of that. But it's making me do more work, which I think is better. It's better. It gave me so much uh, confidence. And I thought, oh, I've done that. And actually getting a CD in my hand with my name on it, it's like validation. It wasn't a mirage. Mother Nature, Mother Nature. So, I, I guess from, from if I'd sort of say a bit about the music side, then perhaps Elaine could say something about her work. I feel one of the most significant parts of this work is, is a kind of change in perception or shifting gaze that's experienced by public and professionals who get to see people's hidden talents, their assets, rather than seeing them through the lens of a kind of clinical diagnosis or their deficits. People are really seeing people as people. And when I, I, I first came across this when I was working in the hospital and I take my work in to show a video to the clients I've been working with. And it's actually the staff were so blown away with what they saw and they'd immediately see people in a different light. And I think this is, this is one of the things that's really powerful about this work. And so how, how does it actually work? Uh, well, I think when you get people to record something or write a song, when they're actually recording, it's actually hard work to do that because they're trying to get it right. So in, in, in a way it's galvanizing their enthusiasm. It requires concentration, hard work, effort and enthusiasm. And a lot of time people are, you know, people don't, don't want to do things. They're stuck, they're sort of feeling very isolated, but using this kind of system, it's a way of sort of translating their stories into songs and tracks and the whole thing beca becomes a kind of celebration for them. And I also think, you know, music motivates people because they love it. So it's a it's a sort of Trojan horse in a way of getting people to kind of come out of themselves and suddenly come alive and start start working out what they might want to be. So I think it's it's yeah, it's a, it's a sort of taking them some of the way along. And then I think what we've done working with Elaine as well is 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 putting something else around too, I guess. Perhaps you could say a bit more about that, Elaine. Yeah, I think um, what this grant did was gave us some freedom to, to realize um, 
and build on some intuitions that we'd had as individual therapists working with with groups and individuals that you know we have the evidence base we have the experience but we felt that there was something more that that could be realized by addressing the whole person and you know in most organizational setups um you know we're explicitly veering away from the spiritual or you know um we we're dealing with managing emotions rather than expressing them. And so this really gave people um, an opportunity to, to explore all of that. And by working on the mind, body and spirit simultaneously, I was doing a, a weekly class with them. And for people who would have found it actually quite hard to do a group uh, in, endeavor at the beginning, they, in, in the online experience actually worked for them because they could choose when they were on camera, when they weren't. And under the guise of um, you know, increasing our confidence, our breath work, our range of sort of presentation, we had several ways into the spiritual that was with the purpose of enhancing how people would come to the music therapy. Um, and by joining up these different modes of support, I think we were able to deliver something sort of greater than the sum of its parts. And that was where our volunteers and also all the participants actually came together to, um, to create a community around these activities that weren't just isolated spots in the week. There were ongoing conversations. And we've seen that even since the official completion of the process um, where we've got a next steps group that has continued under their, their own steam. And I think that's something, Martin, you've been facilitating, might want to say something about. Yes, I think that um, this project was able to reach a group of people who are, are often labelled by mental health services, but often really left behind, uh, and to show that as well as music, uh, there's the opportunity for uh, people to connect as individuals and to grow as individuals through... Um, uh, mind body work uh, and by implication for other sorts of work as well uh, but it, it helps us to realize that uh, just a single program or a repeat program uh, needs to help people to um, continue that work both recognizing the importance of music and other forms of uh, mind body work uh, but also moving on to other forms of being themselves uh, demonstrating and living their skills and confidence um, in their community networks, starting off in their social networks, meeting people, maybe linking in through other community groups and uh, sometimes mental health groups or recovery colleges and so on. Yeah, and I, th I think for me in projects I've done, a, done in the past, which have been mainly through music, um, I've always wanted this peer support and, and so an ongoing thing to develop. And I think this project round has really we're really seeing that happening with the agency and the people themselves to to want to do things and yeah it's very exciting the way it's it worked out amazing look there's what a great project You're getting fantastic comments coming up uh, in the chat here about it people love it and uh, you know music's got such power to go to places that other things don't really isn't it? it's like one of those amazing left field things that gets past other you know places that other things don't um uh, I, uh, I'm going to sneak in with a question of my own before I start weighing into these, which I'd just like to hear at least one of the backstories of those pieces of music that we heard there. Uh, maybe, John, could you tell us, something, you know, a little bit about what was going on there? Who, yeah. who did it? What, how they did it? You know, what? Yeah, all about it. OK, well, what, what one um, particular person um, who came up with the, the track Mother Nature, uh, she'd never written a song before. She hadn't even sung. She was, she'd was she sung in a choir, uh, but she didn't know anything about the idea of creating a song, never done it before, and didn't actually believe that she'd be able to do it. And, and in the early stages of the project, when I was trying to set up Zooms, I mean, uh, now Zoom is something that we're all sort of aware of, and we've got very good at running it, like this event, for example. But back in... Back a few months, people were really rubbish at connecting on Zoom. And this one particular person was saying, I really don't think I'm going to be able to carry on in this project because I have such problems connecting through Zoom. And I encouraged her and, and, and kept her going. 
And then she, she told me the story about how Mother Nature, she felt, was really helping her during her kind of lockdown period where she just felt so bad. But what she'd do, she'd go out into nature and nature would kind of make her feel better. So what we did is one of the guys played a bit of harmonica, uh, someone else played a bit of guitar and through a kind of collaborative thing, we sort of got the whole song together and she sung it. She can't even believe that she's actually sung it. She's gone on to, to do two other songs. And it's, it's just a it's just a fantastic way this project works. Once you instill enthusiasm into somebody, it's amazing what they can do and they, they start to really believe in themselves. I think that's a very moving story example of how the two things came together as well because we'd been doing visualizations about our safe places and the places where we feel joy inside ourselves and um, seeing some of those themes then cropping up in the music that people were creating sort of was real validation of bringing those modalities together amazing so look let's weigh into the the uh, chat here um so inspiring are there plans for the project to continue into the future and if so what way yeah, well, one of the, the great things is that it, a project like this generates ideas but uh, most immediately we're, we're seeking to join up with another community music organization uh, in in harringay to sort of uh, uh, team up to uh, get a better identity uh, and a greater basis for community music we'd also like to uh, expand the peer support uh, elements uh, of the work because some of the uh, people through the experiences that John's described have become keen on linking up with other community groups or carrying on uh, as their own peer support group. Uh, so, so those are amongst the things we'd like to continue to do. Uh, in the longer term, uh, it seems as though there should be a fit for this type of work with the, what uh, the government policy calls social prescribing so that yeah. uh, people can um, uh, link up with uh, a music project which suits their own recovery from physical or mental illness. Mm. So in case anybody doesn't know what social prescribing is, it's the newfound ability that GPs have to actually prescribe something like this project instead of uh, some drugs. So uh, it's an amazing new direction for medicine. Um, uh, I love this project as it breaks out of the medical model that tends to restrict creativity. How did you select the first participants? We didn't select them. They, they sort of selected us and uh, were referred. Some were already known to us through other activities. And then um, organisations like um, Mind, Age UK, um, referred people. John, do you want to talk about the people who came yeah. through? Your... There's also, yeah, connections I've got through um, hospital work and various organisations. So um, often when people know that there's a the project's coming up, they're sort of desperate to get referrals in. So um, no, it wasn't hard. It was, and it, yeah, it's been great the, the way it's worked out. Great, okay. Well, look, that's time up. Fabulous project. Thank you so much for sharing about it. Um, and uh, great again to be able to support it. Thank you. Thank you.